When the Queen of Jordan conducts an interview with CNN's Christiane Amanpour from her opulent palace in Amman, decrying the plight of the Palestinian people at the hands of the Israelis, the same Israelis who haven't had a moment to mourn their dead, the same Israelis who left their honeymoons and their homes in the diaspora and returned en masse to Israel to protect its citizens. So let me just get this straight. The exquisitely regal Queen Rania, together with her husband, His Majesty King Abdullah, continue to close off Jordan to the Palestinians and yet accuse Israel and the West of glaring double standards. I'm sorry, what's wrong with this picture? Was it the Holocaust survivors' job to nourish the Nazis after the camps were liberated? Was it the Tutsis' responsibility who were massacred and raped in the hundreds of thousands to clothe and sustain the armed Hutu militias that all but decimated them in Rwanda? And where, perhaps, were the members of the LGBTQ plus community, some of Hamas's most vocal supporters of late, when Ahmed Abu Marahia, a young gay Palestinian man, managed to escape to Israel but was abducted, murdered and his body mutilated by Hamas last year? I ask all these rhetorical questions because all roads lead to one incontrovertible truth. It's a truth so painful to utter and yet one that must be acknowledged and sounded for all to hear. The anti-Semitic bigotry that's been allowed to fester and ferment in cities, on college campuses and all over the West has finally burst at the seams. So please, dear citizens of the world, understand, we know right from wrong. We know what constitutes war crimes. We know what pogroms look like. We know what baseless hatred looks like. We are a nation of poster children for the most insidious forms of prejudice, racism and intolerance the world has ever seen. We will never forget how our lives were shattered on the 7th of October. We will never forget the collective blind eye that was turned. We will never forget the ripping down of posters of kidnapped babies. We will never forget the callous disregard for Jewish lives. We will never forget your chance of gas the Jews. And we will never forget your victorious celebrations of our dead, our mutilated and our hostages. We see you and we thank you for coming forward in all your inhumanity. We thank you for allowing us to finally realise that anti-Zionism was always anti-Semitism. We thank you for displaying for all to see just how malevolent your intentions are for our people. We thank you for not pretending anymore. We thank you for the clarity. And once Hamas is degraded and the Western leaders thank us for removing this scourge, because they desperately don't want what happened to the people of Israel to happen to their own citizens within their ever increasingly porous borders, we will continue to fight for peace. We will continue to fight for harmony and coexistence. We will continue to love our Israeli Arabs, Druze and Palestinian brothers and sisters who prosper in Israel. And the world's media can distort, misrepresent, lie, propagandize as much as it likes. It can publish misinformation that incites violence to Jews all over the globe and fail to retract it when it has irrefutable proof to the contrary. You know, of course, what I'm talking about. The international press condemning Israel for striking the Al Ali hospital in Gaza. The chorus of legacy media starting with the once prestigious New York Times and the BBC couldn't wait to lay blame at the feet of the Israelis. And we're getting their intel from Hamas. Hamas. The terrorist genocidal organisation that have recordings of their henchmen calling their parents with pride to celebrate their slaughter of Jewish people. But when the facts prove that it was the Palestinian Islamist Jihad organization that misfired a rocket that was intended for Israeli civilians that landed in the car park of the hospital in Gaza, the world went quiet. Oops. Yet again, the facts got in the way of a really good story. Jewish people cherish life. We learn in the Talmud that if you save a life, you save an entire world. We've lost more than 1,400 worlds and counting in the most heinous of ways. 
Something else you might like to know? Jewish people also preserve the dignity of our dead and fallen. So parading images around the world of our deceased's broken and mutilated and burnt bodies is not what we do. But because of the detractors and naysayers, the doubters and the haters, we had to. Against all our morals, our beliefs and our better judgment, we showed independent journalists of the world the horrors that were proudly and brazenly filmed by Hamas's terrorists on their GoPros of the pregnant mother carved up and killed next to her fetus that was still attached by the umbilical cord, of the babies plugged with bullet holes, of the families with their hands tied behind their backs and burned alive. And I'm not even touching the sides. Some have rightfully called this war porn, but that still wasn't enough for you because in truth, it would never have been enough for you. All roads lead to the same devastating conclusion and knowing that world jewelry will never be able to unsee or forget. The anti-semitism so many of you feel pours out of every pore and you can't conceal it any longer and we will never forget. But we'll also never forget those who stood with us shoulder to shoulder, who grieved with us, sent messages of love and solidarity and cared for us in our darkest hour. As I've said and repeated and will die on this hill if I have to, our children, our babies, our toddlers, our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, our grandmothers, grandfathers, our beloved and revered Holocaust survivors are being held in Gaza. And the world wants to dictate how Israel should act? Just a thought. Release the 220 plus innocent hostages and see what Israel does next. Bring them home now.